Give me, answer me this question. How could you use that sound? What environment, what situation could you use a sound that a robot is dying down? Give me an example of where you can use this sound. Anybody? Let's think about it. So if yeah. it, five people are typing. Okay, I'll let you type. How could we use the sound of a robot dying? You could make the song fade away. 80s riser in reverse. What is that exactly? Yes, it doesn't have no but where could we use that? Could we say could we so we're gonna try and make our we're gonna make our websites next. Where could we use a sound of a robot? If you're making a film, could you make could you put that sound in anywhere? If you're making a TV program, if you're making an ad, a video for somebody, if you're making a meme, could you use that sound in? A, how could you use that good Simona in a sci-fi? If you're making a sci-fi film, if you're making something that is to do with sci-fi, you could use that sound. Save that sound that you've got because to you it sounds like a computer a robot's dying, and then you can use that in the future. Maybe you want to use that as a sound on your website for when maybe people click on something, that sound comes through. Yeah, so. Remember that everything that you can you are building today are tools for you to use in the future. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, yeah, so a really good way of, of doing it is uh, keep a little sample library of bits and pieces that you sound that sound good. Um, birds um, sort of called dogs barks as well. Um, sort of bits and pieces like that. That everything can sound good treated differently. Um, so I'm just going to show you a bit of guitar. Let me know if you can hear the guitar. Hopefully you can. I'm just going to move the microphone down. Okay. Cool. Yeah, we'll definitely record something. We'll just take the last one there then. But I just wanted to highlight to you guys that basically recording stuff like this is all the same once you know the basic aspects of recording into a microphone everything else from there is actually very similar so you can be recording your voice you could be recording a guitar or something like that either way the process is actually very similar at the start um, obviously it can get a little more difficult towards when you want to do different bits and pieces but what i'm trying to get across to you guys is that if you can record yourself clapping your hands you can record an entire band it's a case of spending the time to do it um so We've just literally made a, our own drum kit and then recorded some guitar in about sort of 20 minutes. And that's once you know the basics of it, you can really get a lot faster with it. Um, so uh, we're going to just look at that and just start cutting these bits and pieces up. And then we're going to show you a bit about the EQ um, so we can make them sound a bit better. So what we're going to do is... Mr. Evans, your guitar playing was beautiful. Ah, oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone would agree. Everyone agrees. <laughs> to get a little personal uh, performance here one day. I'm That's sure. It. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> end of end of term stuff. There we go. <laughs> uh, so we're just gonna go back to our. Yeah, <laughs> it was Clifford playing it. <laughs> Good one, Clifford. <laughs> if it was you playing, it'd be better, mate. I'm sure yeah. of it. <laughs> so I'm just gonna. Should work. Sorry, just bear with the online. The stuff is a little bit trickier than I would like. But there we go. Okay. Doing a fantastic job, Mr. Evans. We understand. I understand that the routing sound and stuff like that are about. Yeah, well, it's, it's always good. You know what it's like. Cool. Okay, so um, bear with me just a second. Yeah, no problem. problem. Okay, guys. So whereabouts are you now? Have you, have you all recorded a sound into the DAW? Let me know. Give me a Y on the chat board if you recorded a sound into the DAW. Well done, Sasha. Well done, Simona, Kyra. Guys, you guys are brilliant. Well done, Miriam's logged in now. Brilliant, fantastic. Kevin, what you need to do, did you add track? Yeah. Well done, Ian. Fantastic. Brilliant. Angelique's done four. Angelique, what sounds did you do? Let us know. We, so we can good perfect well done miriam's logged in so now you need to go top right hand corner and click on create the orange button that says create no it's not that i it just okay let me know kevin so yeah let us know what the sounds you've created so maybe we can give other ideas to other people in the room so they could use those things so clifford had a great idea of using rice in a bottle which was a fantastic idea 
Kyra said to put toys. I think she to put, where did you put toys in a box? Um, good. What else have we got? Elijah, what about you? What have you put in there? You got to refresh, try refreshing it, uh, Kevin. Pressing F5 or pressing Control and R on your keyboard. Yeah. So let us know what other things did you put in there? Ukulele. Very nice, Angelique. Beautiful. Well, don't forget, guys, once you've made your project and completed your project, which Mr. Evans is going to show you how to do, put You Teach Me MI in your uh, title, in your project title, so that we can find it and have a listen to it. Yeah, exactly, guys. Yeah, but, um, really, the idea is that we, at, by the end of this, we can all be listening to each other's tracks every week, um, sort of seeing how everyone's doing and then um, seeing how we can help improve it as well. Sorry to just take a quick break there. I just wanted to, uh, what we're gonna, what I've done there is to hopefully just put all the sample just at the very beginning of the track. So what it sounds like is then it's at the one there. Should be two. Yeah, so building that up, which is our kick. They're all there. So what we can do now is just say we're just gonna build our track up, just our drum rhythm. So I'm gonna put what we call a four to the floor. So I'm just copying um the our kick drum here. If we look just at so it's our kick one here. So I'm just gonna do a beat which kind of is gonna go boom, 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 boom. And how I've done that is I've gone uh one bar and then one half bar, two bars, and then I'm gonna put another one here. So I'm just copying pasting. Oh, but you should put it in the right place, and then it should sound like that. So that's we're gonna call that our kick beat. So it sounds it doesn't quite sound perfect yet, but it it'll sound a lot better when we're finished with it, I promise. That's our loop. I've just got um a two bar loop going up there. So it should be that. Just like that. So um where you guys should be at the moment, you don't need to do the kick first. Um I'm I'm gonna do it that way just because it makes life easier for me. But um, really what we're looking to do here is we're just layering up and organizing our samples into something which is going to start to sound a bit more like a sort of basic drum rhythm. Um, now, I know this is not, you don't need to do this this way. Natalia, fantastic. Glad everyone's um, sort of keeping up with this. I know it's a little bit complicated. So um, don't worry if you're finding it a little bit hard just to, um, we'll try and go back on this at some point. But I just want to, ooh, that's what I want. Ooh, not that far. And so I just want to see. And then I'm just going to build up stuff from here. And this is going to basically, it's a very sort of basic 4-4 four, um, four, four drum rhythm. Some of you are going to know what I mean by that. If you don't, don't worry at all. I didn't know what that meant until about sort of two weeks ago either, so it's all fine. Um, <laughs> That's a lie. <laughs> yeah, well, close enough. So now we've got something which should be sounding. It's starting to sound like a drum kit, right? Um, and then now I've played this. God knows what this percussion is going to sound like because I recommend getting someone who can, with a bit more rhythm, to play percussion if you can. But since you're stuck with me today, the sounds hopefully. All right, maybe we'll just stick with the <laughs> stick with these for now, and then it could work on them. Yeah, it could. Uh, if so it'd be a nice intro. Um, yeah, something like that. Oh, just get out. Uh, so. so that's kind of what we got at the moment. Um, might sort of just come back to that. But... So it's kind of just remember we've literally just recorded this stuff in just now. So that's when we're kind of already getting to a point where it's sounding like something. Um and what I'm gonna do here is we're gonna to go to what we we know before. I'm just gonna try and keep it fairly simple. So we're gonna to go to our FX FX. You guys know all about this stuff. Um, but don't worry if it's if it's new for a couple of you. We're just gonna go back to what we normally did before. So I'm just gonna add an effect. We're gonna to go to a recommended. Going to add some drive to it. Um, so it's going to start to sound 
Now, remember, you guys can play around with this as much as you want, but let's see what it sounds like. <coughs> So we're kind of what we're doing there is we're kind of taking away bits of tone. Um, so it's going to sound a bit more kind of boomy. Um, this is just our kick here. So it's kind of sounding a bit more like a like a bass drum now, right? Because um, we've kind of taken away different bits of pieces. So it's kind of it's sounding thicker because we've got some distortion on, and we've also taken the tone way down. So it kind of sounds kind of boomy. And then we're going to add some reverb because everyone loves reverb. A bit of that. Turn the size down because that's sounds kind of a lot more like a bass drum now, right? Uh, so we're very interesting. Listen to that back with the rest. Yeah, of the it say like like knocking on the door. Yeah, yeah, it does actually. Yeah. Um, so we're going to go to our snare now, and then we're going to add some effects to that. So at the moment, it sounds like this, which is fine. Like it, it sounds. It sounds like what it is. It's like a, a yes. Yeah, it's, it's me clapping my hands. So we're gonna do the same thing as before. We're gonna add some drive to it. Turn the tone up for this one. Then like that, and then we're gonna add some reverb. Again, like this. Take the size down again because it's just too epic. So we got that. I mean, that's kind of sort of almost dubstep levels of of like kind of size. But you got you you beginning to see what we're doing here. I'm gonna go back and as always listen to it back. So you can begin to see here that we're kind of layering everything up. Um, the so we've got our kick, which kind of sounds like that. And then we've got our snare. I don't know why we got a little bit there, but such is life. There we go, guys. So as you can see, we're kind of building up this sort of 4-4 four, four rhythm. Um, and then obviously, we can just look at the hi-hats last. So it, they kind of sound quite hi hatty already, because that's kind of, yeah, it's a high tink sound. But we're going to do the same as before because we want to make sound kind of consistent. So we're going to add, go back to our driver, turn the tone way up. So sounds a bit like that now. Then we're going to go to our reverb again. And then. So you can see it, we're kind of, it's, it's sounding bigger. It sounds like it's in a bigger room, that's for sure. Just going to add. A, Back we go. Just going to add a little bit of sort of color in the last bit. So we're just going to go in close and then maybe add things. So we've got just a little bit of difference there. Feel free to play around with whatever you want there. Um, so, <laughs> so we've got kind of like building up there. And then. Yeah, it's kind of like bells. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds kind of like menacing, really. The sevens, um, that actually sounds pretty good. <laughs> it's not bad, right? Yeah, yeah. You can, um, so yeah compression, it sounds nice. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. As a, just so you're not, remember, you're not confined by tempo here either. Um, so, so let's see. Let's go to. Thank you, Akeshma. Akeshma says, uh, it sounds very nice. It's not bad. It's awesome. You're right. It is awesome. It sounds like an Egyptian people. Very good, Miriam. Very good point. Are we going to have a listening party, Mr. Evans? Yeah, yeah, we, will yeah. yeah we will do. Yeah, we should, we'll have some time at the end. Um, so. I think a 120 because it's easier for now. Um, but basically... I'm just going to add a little bit of effects to the guitar. Um, so it didn't record the entire section of the guitar, there, but that's that's fine. We're going to add some reverb because everyone loves reverb. That's the rule. And then we're going to add uh, where's our we're going to do some delay as well. You remember this? I'm sure you do. 
and then I'm just going to put that that way. So we're just basically just making that sound a little bit longer. That's all. And then put it back on. Yep, so it's all we're just looking to basically just add a little bit of color to it. Um, so what we got there, just to go through everything again really quickly, is we've recorded our kick, um, we've recorded our claps, bits piece like that. Um, we've used, we've got a hi-hat, I have a cup, and then we put them all together. Remember, you can cut them up however you want. Um, I've just used this as a 4-4 four -four beat because it's kind of an easy one to get your head around. But um, feel free to you know do anything with it. Um, you can really sort of change change bits and pieces up. There's no rules as always. As try and remember that. Um, and basically, just by adding effects, we've kind of got something which kind of sounds pretty cool by the end. I mean, still would love to. You need to go in and kind of remember this. Also, another part of it is kind of just make sure your samples are on the one. You're just dragging them here, putting them back. That's a then, very good point that Mr. Evans said, guys. Make sure all your sounds are on the one. So you see at the top in the red bar at the top, it says one, you've got two, three, four. All your sounds should start on the one. Yeah, Is that right? Only, perfectly right, yeah. Because it's if you don't, you're going to come into problems where it's basically it's just going to sound a bit out of time. And it's really difficult to kind of work that back. For example here, um, let me show you, say on with this snare. See there, it's not on the one anymore. Mm. Put it here. So now it's going to sound weird. See, it's behind. We need to make sure that it's always as close as you can. So we're just going to drag that back up. Uh, That's correct, Simona. Sometimes some of them don't. So that makes a different beat. It will make a different That's beat. That's true. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. You can look at sort of humanizing and bits and pieces like that. We call it um, in electronic music, you call it swing, um, but you can call it um, rhythm, whatever you like, really. Uh, let's. A lot of the time you kind of want, it sounds a bit machiny if it's all on the one. Um, so yeah, feel free to experiment um, everyone around with different things like that. Um, how are we doing for time at the moment? Uh, we probably need to speed up a little bit, yep. Right, okay, cool. Um, then I'm just going to look really quickly at something which might be useful to some of you, um, maybe not to everyone, but it's definitely something to keep in mind. So um, I'm just going to look at, for example, um eq on using a kick because i know some of you might have got to the point where you want your sounds to come through a little bit more in, in what we call the mix um so i'm just going to look at this really quickly clifford this is slightly targeted towards you regarding the vocals for your sound for yep. your song yeah perfect um i'm also, sorry i'm gonna go through um just the i'll do kick and then i'll do a little bit of snare because they've got more similarity to vocals um so we are gonna don't worry if this isn't something you're going to get completely, guys. Um, I will go through all of this stuff again. Um, but it's really just a case of sort of giving some people a bit more stuff to chew on in, in the week, um, stuff they can get their heads into. And for everyone else, just to get your head around this whole recording and looping stuff, because that's what's going to form the basis of most of the tracks. But for now, Graphic EQ. Um, some of you might know what this is. Some of you might not. There's also um, here, so we're going Tone. So we're going to not use any ones we have before. We're going tone. And then you're going to have a three-stage EQ as well. Um, I'm Actually, I'm going to go through the three-stage because that's a little bit easier for what we're going through. Right. So um, now try and follow me on this. Don't worry if it doesn't make super sense. Hang on. There we go. So um, I want you to think about sounds like in terms of uh, frequency. So the mid is kind of going to be like that sort of thing, that mid-level. Low is more like mm, that sort of low end, and then high is you know the sort of stuff we go up here. So just to show you what I mean, rather than confuse. Sorry, it. sir. Can I just interrupt one second, guys? Did you hear what Mr. Evans just said? So can you just tell me what Mr. Evans just said? Okay, guys, let me know what Mr. Evans just said on that message on there. Well, he just taught you because it's very, very important in regards to music. Let me know in the chat box. What did he say? Yeah, so we're gonna nobody typing. <laughs> yeah, this is this is it is complicated, guys. I'm aware of it, but it is really useful. So try and um try and keep up with it. And don't worry if you don't get it, but I because I will go through it again. But it's definitely worth for some of you um to try and listen on this one because this is gonna mean a lot more to some of you than it will to others. Okay, Mr. Everson, so can I ask you to teach that again? I'm gonna close the chat so that we can focus. Yeah, 
Right. So um, when we think about sounds, you're going to have to start thinking about them in a slightly different way to everyone else does. That's that's the curse of music, but you, you get used to it. So what we want is I'm going to go through, say, a mid sound, which is here, then is going to be in the middle of a, a frequency spectrum. Um, and then so it's going to sound a lot like that. That's kind of the middle of the frequency spectrum. It's like your snares, your vocals, those are in the middle. And then towards we get to the high end, which, and ironically, the hi-hats are called that for a reason. Then it's sort of stuff like this. So you can hear it. It's a higher frequency. And then if it's in the low frequency, it's going to be low, like mm, that sort of end of things. So you really need to look at music in terms of layers, like that bottom end is there, the middle end is there, and then the top end is there. And that's going to help you kind of figure out about how to shape your sounds, um, if you want to play around with it, and how to change it. So um, I'm just going to show you, and then we'll go over it again and see who's been listening. So at the moment, let's go on a kick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take away all the high frequencies. Can you hear it? So now it's sounded a lot more bass. So we put so it's, it's taking everything away. You can just hear it. It's just just that mid end, like with that, and with everything back, it sounds like this. Literally, it'll be easier to show you on this one. Like, give it, and then just for more extremes, so turn up again, and then let's. You can just see I'm just cutting all these frequencies. See? As I cut them, that's at the very end. That's a, if you can hear that, which some of you might not be able to, um, but that is, and then take away, then you've got nothing. So we, and I'm going to put the frequencies back. So you can hear it. The mid is coming in now. And then the high end. And we're back to normal. So for a kick drum, these are going to be really quick rules. Um, again, don't normally say rules, but they, this will help a lot. If you want to do that, then you want to cut all the frequencies you're not using. Kind of like that. So then it's going to sound a bit like more like a kick drum in your mix. So. And without it, it's that. See? Sounds a little quieter, but through your headphones, it's going to sound a lot more bassy because you can now turn it up. It's clearer though. I didn't know. Yeah, that. definitely. Because you, we're the aim of the game here, especially with mixing, is to get rid of all those frequencies you don't, you're not using. If you're not using it, get rid of it because there are just little bits of sound always escape back into it. What Mr. Hines said there is basically the whole point of mixing. We're making it clearer by getting rid of certain sounds that you don't want. So. Just to give you an example, we'll go to the snare again, because you're going to be able to hear this quite easily. So we're going back to tone. We're going to use our graphic EQ because it's it's just better. And then we'll just we'll go back to snare. So it's going to, it's going to sound like that. Let's turn up if you can hear it. And again, now that's going to cut all those low frequencies. You can hear now it's already thinner. I'm going to keep cutting the low the mid frequencies now. Now it's getting really thin. See? Now it just sounds like you're just clicking your fingers. That's the very high end. See, that's all, the, and that's without the high end, that's nothing. So we're going to put it back. We want our kick to be quite, our uh, snare rather, to be quite midi. Do that. Put back those low frequencies. And then, and then because it's snare, we don't really want that low frequency. So I've just got rid of it. So now it should start sounding a little bit clearer when. You can really hear uh, separation between the yeah. bass and the snare. Exactly. Yeah, and that's um, I know to some of you this might not be super important right now, but really when you want to put your tracks together and you want to start showing people, this is an essential part of, of the whole process. Um, so you just want to take these ideas and apply them. Um, you don't need to do it this way, but I'd recommend it's a good place to start. And then from there, do whatever you want, guys. You know, that's the whole point of it. Every song that you've heard, you've listened to, all your Ariana Grandes, all your mm. mute, I'll come in, what is it? The guys that you listen to. Um, <laughs> yeah, Ed Sheeran. Um, <laughs> they 
all mixed their song all the songs that you've ever heard even the music on tv on television shows it's all mixed and what mr evans is now teaching you is how to mix the sound because if you put all the sounds together i'm sure you've heard all, all loads of sounds crunched together you throw something down the stairs or whatever it makes a cre incredibly noisy sound what mr evans is teaching you is how to clean that sound and prepare that so that other people can listen in a professional way so how people listen to music right now you wouldn't believe the, the the amount of um, effort and knowledge and information that is applied to one song that you have heard. Any song that you have heard has had a, these it would have the musicians part of it, the singer, the mix engineer, like what Mr. Evans does, it's mix engineer. You have a mastering engineer, someone who then, once Mr. Evans has finished the mixing, it'll be handed to the masterer who will master the sound and make it commercially uh, ready as well. Yeah. So there's a lot to it. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. Yeah, it's, um, it's really a case of sort of building on what you have um, and really highlighting the stuff which you want people to hear um, and then take away stuff which you don't want people to hear. It's, it's really that simple when you build it, when you break it down to it. Um, but there's so many different ways you can do it, whether it's with EQ, just with volume. Um, you can delete bits of uh, a sample or, you know, maybe add delay or something like that. Um, the idea is just to make it your own, guys. Um, I think we're probably reaching the end of time. Oh, yeah. We want to a couple of stuff. Um, and then... Uh, but so, as always, I'm just going to label this You Teach Me. I'm going to put Foley, which is what the name of, of the stuff that we were doing today, you know, with all this, this pieces. That's called Foley. And then I've, I've done slash mixing there just so. So I'm going to publish that so you guys can see it. Um, yeah, I'm just going to put it. And so are you able to play, if I put the link up for Clifford's song, are you able to play his song? Should so be, yeah, yeah, should be fine. Yeah, cause if it, is it through BandLab? Yes, it is, yeah. It is. Oh, yeah, then, yeah, that should be fine. Um, so I'm going to publish that and then, yeah, so that's you guys, um, as always, you can always, uh, get in touch through the, um, you teach me sort of page there. Um, if you search for you teach me, you should be start seeing quite a lot of stuff now. Perfect. Simona. Excellent. That's exactly what we oh, yeah, see the Foley, uh, Simona's done hers. Yeah. Great. Well done. That was quick. <laughs> guys. Yeah, no, it's, it's great. And just try and get it in your head as well that just saving and publishing it all the time because um, we don't want to lose your um, your music. It happens uh, far too often sometimes, and it's awful. Um, so don't let that happen to you. Don't be like me. I've put um, the link in the yeah. chat box there, Mr. Evans. So I think it will work off your computer more than it will work off mine. Yeah, yeah. Let's have a look. Um, I'm just going to try see what we got here. No. Can, can you hear that? Yes, we could, yeah. Perfect, nice. All right. Um, now I don't. I can't actually go in to see. Um, one thing that you guys can do. Um, I'm just gonna just before we play this, is I'm just gonna change. See if I can change the name. If it's gonna let me republish it. Yeah. So when we um, publish it, you can go to the publishing settings. Um, what you if you put this, it's uh, it calls it forkable here. Um, it just means that we can all. Um, kind of look at actually how you've done it um so if you just put this here uh forkable on whoops then um it means that people can actually look at how you've done it like literally how you've um put the track together which would be really interesting so um try and put that on you don't have to guys um it's absolutely fine if you don't want to but it does mean that you can um uh that you can we can all look at different ways of how you've done it this one isn't, so we're just going to play it from the start. Um, but it's by Clifford, so you know it's going to be good. So let's all go have a listen to this and see what you guys can take from this and put into your own tracks. Yo. So what happened in bed? We might have dropped Check what happened. Jamie. Now get it. Heavy head punchline. I said it. Catch punch you up, go all out. Don't fret. See your boys done, don't shout. Give, give him the credit. credit. Cause it's not like he's still right off from Reddit. Reddit. Cause I was running straight around, around the whole town. town. Looking for some inspiration that will keep me sound. sound. I was running straight around the whole town. Looking for some inspiration that will keep, keep me sound. sound. I was running straight around the whole town. Looking for some inspiration that will keep me sound. sound. I was running straight around the whole town. Looking for some inspiration that will keep me sound. Oh, I want my man. <laughs> yeah, he is. 
Selector. Silent. <laughs> You about to drop it. Mm-hmm. Drop a bomb on this. Just get it. Just get it. Wow. Let's have a round of applause. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Well done. That's Brilliant. Excellent. Really, really good. Yeah, yeah, that's you've taken um, a lot of what we talked about and kind of look at the layers, uh, the vocal work especially. I really love that layering kind of effect you're going for there. Really, really good, man. Excellent. Um, what would you say to Clifford to because he was asking me a question on an email how to mix the vocals? Yeah, um, it really depends on what you want to do. Uh, I'll just go through one thing really quickly there, just for what you want, just no specifically to answer that question. Um, my first thought would be you want to have your vocals going left and right. If we've got it's called panning, um, and this was something we haven't looked at here, but I'll give you an example really quickly. So um, let's make a try. And... Just to let you know, sir, he's made it forkable. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Um, we can even go through that. Um, I'll have a look and see what we've done, and then um, and then maybe I just give you a couple examples in your track which you can follow or not. Um, but just for now. We'll look at panning. So at the moment, we're going to listen to these. So um, I'm just going to play it like this, just for now. This it will make sense. So I think it. Oh no, you haven't panned it yet. Anyway. Yeah, no, I've not panned yet. <laughs> yeah. um, if you've got headphones on, this is going to sound a lot more obvious. But what I'm doing here is we're going to pan here. So I'm just going to make one. Just have this. So you got this. And then if you pan it left, you should just be hearing it in the left-hand side of your headphones now. If I pan it right, the opposite, right? So in the middle, you can hear it on both sides, and then left, right. Now, why would I want to do that? Because if I've got two different things happening at the same time, if they're both in the center of your head, in your head, basically, it's kind of hard to hear the difference. Um, this is another mixing thing that people do all the time. So we're going to pan one hard right pan the other, hard left, and then it's going to kind of bounce back. So like this. Oh, amazing. Well done. It sounds, you know, like if they're together in the middle, it just sounds like a crazy mess. See? But as soon as we start to pan them, left and right, you can hear. You can hear both sounds now. That's a really extreme example. But in order to um, to answer your question, Clifford, about sort of vocals, a bit of piece like that, that is a really good way of, of separating them out. Um, and that should make them easier to hear as well. Just other bits about tidying up. But yeah, try that first and then experiment with that kind of sound. I'd say listening to your song, Clifford, definitely the ad libs that you've done on top, which I think you did yesterday. You put some vocals on top to make it sound louder. Put, pan those left and right, each one, and then they, they come in behind and they won't in, interfere with the main vocal that you have in the middle. Okay, because there's going to be some interference, basically. Yep, yep, exactly that. Yeah, that's that would be the first tip um, I'd go with. But um, yeah, if everyone would just make them, them forkable in the future, we can actually go through um, stuff in the future and look at each track individually, and then we can all give each other advice. But um, we'll leave it for there, just for that example today, and then we can go back to it next time. Um, but yeah, like I said, I put everything here on. So it's you teach me Foley. It's about mixing wrong now, but if I spell it right, yeah, we'll do it that way um then published so it's and it should be forkable so you guys can play around with this sound and put in your own or whatever um but yeah hopefully that was illuminating and interesting enough for you guys and i know it was a bit of a quick one today but uh yeah hopefully you guys got something out of it and 
looking forward to hearing all your tracks again as usual that was an amazing lesson mr evans i must say um just so you know we had another teacher coming in there from um, another institution who was watching your lesson which is really really good um so fantastic mr evans that was an amazing lesson thank you so much can we have a big tysm for um mr evans that's my new little short code TYSM. <laughs> um, yeah that was brilliant that was brilliant that was absolutely amazing really what i really liked what you did in that lesson is you you mixed the technical with the physical tangible reality do you know yeah, what I mean? more, yeah it's nice to get people kind of recording a bit more um i know we've looked a lot about loops and stuff like that so you know just get get everyone sort of um playing around with whatever the instruments and sounds they can hear you know some and be inspired by it and just yeah that was a fantastic lesson thank you so much mr evans so there was one thing i wanted to say i cannot remember now what was it that nah, doesn't matter come to me but really good well done thank you thank you very much mr evans brilliant uh i cannot remember what i was going to say but you'll probably bring it up in another lesson I just no totally yeah, yeah yeah we'll, we'll, we'll cover it at some point and uh yeah just mess with me or anything any questions for mr evans on the music technology next guys we're going to be coding the, the, doing the starting the coding of our website for june when we start the coding for our website what we can do is put our 3d models our video edits our music that we've all made in tech club and we can all put that into our website and i'm going to be showing you by time guys so what i'm going to be doing now is i'm going to be taking you up until 4 30 for coding lesson if you have to go that's no problem you can go but there is more of tech club less less left if you want to stay we will be beginning to code our own websites okay so we'll be starting that. So let's say a big thank you to Mr. Evans. Thank you very much, Mr. Evans. That was a fantastic lesson. Yeah, really, really, really good. Um, thank you very much. Now, guys, what I want you to do is, if you are staying with us, we will be doing a coding our own website. Now, what the first thing I want you to do is, you, I'm going to put up a button for you, and it is called glitch.com. And then I want you to go to glitch.com. And I, and I want you to sign up with your um, Google Mail, your USO, use your Gmail, okay? I want you to sign up there, okay? So there is still more Tech Club, guys. Stay more. And at the end of this, we will be doing a Kahoot as well, okay? So, so everyone should have gone to glitch.com. I'm going to remove this, but that's it. Thank you very much, Natalia. I really needed you to do that. Um, perfect. Okay. Now everybody's watching. Let me know if you're all at glitch.com. Can you give me a Y in the text box so I know that you're there, please? There we go. Brilliant. Fantastic. Okay. So I'm going to read a bit of information to you guys. Whilst I'm reading that information, I want you to set up to log in to glitch i don't want you to go any further than just logging in once you've logged into glitch i want you to come back to me okay but while you're doing that i'm going to read this to you so we have an understanding of what we're doing okay so glitch is a web application that is designed for learning to code for the web you can make websites using html css and javascript html and css are programming languages uh, used to design websites. JavaScript is a programming language used for creating interactions. Now, just to give you a bit more information on that, if you want to come back, no problem, Simona, no problem. Well, there's a button. I want you to go and set up your glitch.com uh, website now, okay? Thank you. Okay, and brilliant. So now that you've done that, guys, I'm going to bring you back to this image that we had before. Can someone tell me what this image means to them? What is it? What, can you understand what this image means? And I don't want you to tell me what's exactly on the screen. I want you to interpret it. What does that mean? Does anyone know what that means on the web page, on, on the screen right now? You've got website structure, you've got HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Got only Simona typing in the box at the moment. Only Simona. Okay, brilliant. Some more people typing. What does that mean? Somebody tell me, what does that mean? Good, Natalia T. It's telling me that the structure of the website, if it was a human. Very good, Simona. Um, I like the answer, uh, Natalia T. That's correct. Okay, good, cool. So we kind of got that right, but there was a few things. So that's good. Let's go over it. Okay, so um, now every single website that you use online, YouTube, Google, 
Roblox, St. Rafael's website, my learn.youteachme.com website, Facebook, BandLab, all of these websites use the same Minecraft exactly use the same structure okay they use the same structure and this is the structure the first thing you need to have on the website is the html that is the skeleton of the website that's the first thing that you code when creating your website then what's the next thing that you code when creating your website somebody tell me well done, Simona, CSS. And CSS is the skin. It's like the style of the website, okay? So it's the colors. It's the design of the website, yeah? Now, JavaScript is like the brain, okay? So the brain is, so it shows you how people interact with the website, whether there's a flashing light coming up or what happens when you click on something, what is the interaction of that website with the people with somebody now can everybody type that into the chat box tell me what is the correct order of the structure of a website go the correct order of the structure of a website one message one message i want the correct order of the structure of a website Who's got that? Simona. Well done. Simona was one of the first in there. HTML. Yes, we've got HTML, but we need it in the same message. I've got Simona in there. No one else has given me the correct um, order. The correct order of the website in full. Oh, Emily, well done. It's, uh, I think that's Sasha. Well done, Sasha. Emily, well done. Brilliant. And Simona, fantastic. Well done, Natalia. That's No, Natalia, that's incorrect. I think you know that, Natalia B. Um, brilliant. So we understand now that HTML, CSS, and JavaScript is the correct web structure of any website. That means in order for you to create a website, you need to learn and understand first HTML, then CSS, and then JavaScript. Okay. Does that make sense? Give me a why on the board if that makes sense to you guys. Good. Well done. Perfect. Okay. So now, uh, yes, here we are. Now, so in order for you to create a website, guys, what you need to do is you need to use a text editor. What do you need to use in order to create a website? Tell me in the box now. Well done, Simona. Simona's on fire today, guys. She's getting in there early. Text editor. She's one of the first people. Well done, text editor. Well done, Natalia T. You need a text editor. Now, that is a text editor is exactly what glitch.com is. It's a text editor. It's where you write your code into the website and then it will create your website. Okay. You need a uh, text editor. Okay. To create your website. Now, now we understand that we need a text editor. Now, the glitch editor. Okay, now I'm going to show you what to do on. Yeah, perfect. Here we go. Now I'm going to show you what to do on. Um, on right. So mine's a little bit different to yours, but I'm just going to cancel the screen share. I'm going to show you the screen share now. Who's what was, what was that? Sorry. Who was that? Let's just look at that message quickly. So it create. It doesn't create code, Simona. Very good. Good. Que good question. You create the code you write the code inside the text editor natalia t what code do you think you should be writing in the text editor to create a website guys what code should you write in a text editor to create a website what's the first code so we fully understand what's going on here yes if you want to create a website what is the foot is the uh, code Well done, Clifford. That's right. It's HTML, right? That's the first bit of code we are going to write in our glitch.com uh, text editor. So here is my text editor. Guys, give me a Y if you can see my text editor. You can see it there. Yeah. Very good. HTML. That's the first coding that we're going to write. Okay. So I'm going to leave my project there. But what I want you to do is everybody logged in to glitch. 
Good, Simone isn't fantastic. Now, once you're logged into Glitch, you can see on the right hand side it says new project. Yeah. I want you to click on your new project. Okay. Let me open a new project as well. So give it some time to load. It does take a while to load because you're using a big um, text editor, which is where you write your code so that you can create your website so that the music, the videos, the 3D modeling and the photography that you do in Tech Club can all go in your personal website so that you can show people on your personal website what you have made and what your abilities are in technology. OK. Perfect. OK, guys. So it looks a bit confusing right at first. Yeah. But I will explain it to you now. We just see at the front of the screen, it says, welcome to Glitch. Uh, you know, Click Glitch is a friendly community where everybody builds websites together and they work together to, fi to fix problems, to debug problems that they may or may not have. OK. Now, if you look here, it says your project, readme.md. This is readme.md is this file right here. Okay. Now, if you look here, it says index.html. The first web page that people arrive to on your website in is index.html in your files. Okay. So this, can you see here, it says, this is where you will write the content of your website. So that's the main content of your website. Then you've got style.css. The CSS files add styling rules to your content, how you add the style. What's script.js, somebody tell me? What's script.js? What does that mean? So make sure, no, not, not, not Hello Express, Hello Web Page. Well done, Simona. Yeah, Hello Web Page is the correct one you need to open is Hello Web Page. Okay. Hello Web Page. That's correct, Simona. Well done. Well done, Kyra. That's right. Iron. Well done. That's right. That's your JavaScript. So as we can see now, we have our HTML document where we write our HTML code. And if you click on the left hand side, you can see index.html. You click on that. And then you'll have some code there. OK, you have a lot of code there. And then if you click on your style.css, that's where you have your CSS files and your styling in your CSS. And then you, and if you clicked on script.js, that is where you would put your JavaScript. Give me a why if you understand that. Give me a why if you understand. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Very good. OK. So just to reiterate, remember, look at this picture here. A website is made up of three different bits of code. The first one's HTML, which when we write our HTML, we write it in index.html file here. And then we also then the second part is the style of the website, which is the .css here. And then you've got the JavaScript at the end, okay, which is the interaction between the website. What pops up? What does this? What does that? What movement does the website have? It makes it move. It makes it alive. It's the brain of the website. OK, and the, uh, OK, brilliant. So. Well done. Yeah, well done. OK. OK, guys, so now that we understand that, no, not, not is there a glitch.com in the UK? Just use the website that we've given you there is glitch.com. It's yeah, glitch.com is the correct website. OK, now that we've done that, guys. We've got the index.html file here. And now we're going to read this code. And then you're going to tell me at the end what you think the website is going to look like. OK. Now, every document starts with an exclamation mark doc type HTML up here. I'm going to read this for you. It's a little bit interesting. No, do you know what? We're going to move on, actually. So, as you can see, it says title. Open title under uh, open bracket you, close bracket, welcome to Tech Club Live, close bracket. What's it going to say there? What's going to happen on that bit of the website? Almost, Simona. Not necessarily. What? What? Okay, so just going back onto the website.
good. Well done, Simone. That's the title. It's the underline. Now, do you know that that's because the title up here, where it says the title, will not re re be on the web page. It will be at the top of the tab. Okay. Now we move on to the next part here, which says input the web page style sheet. Now here it says link rel equals style sheet dot CLSS. So when the website is opened, this is a link to the style sheet. So that's how we link HTML to CSS. We need to include open bracket link rel equals style sheet pref equals forward slash style dot CSS. This bit of code is read by when you go into a website, this bit of code here is read by your web browser. And then it open it goes to the CSS file and opens up the CSS file, the styling upon the website. Okay. So, so if I'm, so that's the CSS style. Can anybody tell me what they see here? What sort of style may happen on the website by looking at that CSS? What sort of style do you reckon could happen on that website? Very good, Amelie. Underline title was very good point back. That was the previous question, but very good. So look at the code on that page. What do you think? What tell does anything tell you what could happen on that page on the web page? Read the code carefully. Let me can I make it bigger for you? No, I cannot. I can't make it bigger for you right now, guys, unfortunately, because I'm screen sharing it. So it disables that. Power. Well, oh, Emily, very good. Very good, Simona. That's right. So you've got the fonts, the color, you've got the italics, and you've got the type that and there will be Arial. So what is Arial? It, can somebody tell me what Arial is? Very good, guys. You're doing really good. You're, it's a font, exactly. Arial is a font. OK, so a font, it would be the style of the color. Brilliant. Fantastic. So we understand that that's what's the style of the website's going to be. OK, if we keep coming down again, this is where we install the JavaScript. We're not going to do JavaScript today. JavaScript is another thing. I'm teaching you HTML, CSS, so we can make the basis of our websites. And JavaScript will be another day, another code. So we have can you see here we have head and we have the closed header. That means that all this information is in the header of the website that will not come apparent when we open the website okay that stays slightly hidden in the head most of your main content of your website will be in the within the body tag and can you see the body tag there can we... good well done can we see the body tag yes so if you can see the body tag can somebody tell me what is the color of the background of the website. Who can tell me? Anybody? Well done. Amelie. Woo, Amelie's on fire. Amelie got that. That's correct. It's at powder blue. Very, very good. Can I just say something, guys? When coding, coding, the most important part of coding is understanding and reading the code not coding itself okay it's the understanding and the reading of the code well done yeah it's powder blue that's right if you look at my page here over here you've got the body tag here and the body style background e color equals powder blue okay now h now the next line says h1 welcome to tech club live now what do you notice about that tag? What can you tell me is going to happen with that tag? What is that tag going to do to the text? What is that tag going to do does to the text? Does anyone know? We've got H1 in brackets. Well done, Simona. It's the heading. It's the heading one. So it's going to be quite big. Then we've got open bracket U, close bracket. Now we have done this. We've tested this a lot. So you should know what this means. Well done, Amelie. That's correct. Well done, Simona. That's right. It's going to underline the title. Now let's look on further. Uh, we'll leave it. We'll hold it there. And now what I want you guys to do is now, sorry, but wait, wait, one second. Let's just have a look at this and then you can show, I'll show you. So at the top of the page, 
Can you see it says titanium bubble polka? And it, see it says it's got a pair of uh, glasses and it clicks show. Yeah. So if you click on show and you choose one of the windows, choose the one next to the code. Yeah. And I've clicked on that. And that really. And there you go. Can you see it is shown my the beginning of my website? Can you see that, guys? Brilliant. OK, so that's so you said so someone said that the title was going to be underlined, which it is. Someone said that it was going to be a heading in H1 where it says welcome to Tech Club Live. That's right. Also, somebody said it was underlined, said that the background was going to be powder blue. That was correct. Now, there's a few other things that I've added in there. But we'll probably go over those th on, uh, on tomorrow if you want. We can do those tomorrow. But make sure you call up. Now, what I want you guys to do is I'm going to come out of this website. You stay in yours. I'm going to we're going to go quickly do. I want you to start coding the beginnings of your website. OK. So let's just open that. Let's let that load for me one second. Now, in index HTML. So if you scroll down. You see where it says, hi there, H1. Change that to something that you would like your people to uh, see when they arrive to your website. Okay. Let me know what you've changed it to. Okay. And then what, when you, if you have, once you've clicked on show up here and you've got the next to the code, it will change it automatically. Okay. So as you can see, I claim, hi there. And if I say tech. Club Live. It will automatically change it to Tech Club Live. Can you see that, guys? No problem. I'll do that again. So if you look at my page, good. I'm glad you said that. If you so you've opened up your in index HTML. Why? Because that's the first page we have to code in our website. Then when we scroll down, after the body tag. So you've got the bit at the top, you've got the head and the closing head, and you've got the body and then H1 underneath that, and it should say hi there. Let me know what you've changed this to. Has, any, has everyone got that? How is everybody doing? Let me know. Emily, Ian, Clifford, Elijah, Natalia T. How you find it, Simona? Good, yeah. Simone, did you were you able to change it? Ian, how's yours coming along? Clifford, have you come, edited your website? Elijah, slightly quiet today. How's it going? Let me know what's going on, Elijah. Okay, so now that we've done that, we've changed. So has everybody's name changed in their website? Let, has you changed your? Has it changed in your website? Let me know. Well done, Emily's blog is mine. Well done, Emily. Well done, Simona changed it to welcome. Yes, I can't see what the web page actually looks like. Right, Clifford, what you need to do is, if you see the sun, the glasses at the top of the page, if you look at me now, you've got the glasses at the top of the page where it says show, you click on that, and then click on the one that says next to the code. And then that's where it will show your website there on the right-hand side. Give it a moment to load, and it will load, okay? Now, what I want you to do, I'm gonna set you a challenge. I want you to give me an introduction about yourself. Now, where would you write the introduction? Somebody tell me, where would the introduction go? Uh, Simona, your website is about everything that you've learned at Tech Club. So it's about your coding. See, so for example, I'll give you an example. It, the introduction could be, hi, my name is Simona. I am X, Y, and Z years old. I go to whatever school. And this is a website that shows you my abilities in 3D modeling, photo editing, coding, video editing, and music technology. Five things there, guys. So you're going to have five different uh, uh, attributes. Where it says, I'm cool, new web page made with. Well done, Kyra. That's exactly right. So you're going to type in here. Uh, see where it says, I'm, I'm your cool, new web page made with glitch where it says i'm your cool new web page that's where i want you to put very good emily that's where i want you to change it so i'm going to change it say hi my name oh, don't change the mate made with bit 
Hi, my name is Mr. Hines, and I am teaching coding on Tech Club Live. I have knowledge of coding and a degree in music technology. How about that, guys? So there you go. You've got your beginning of your website, okay? So you've got your introduction, your thing. Now, we're going to do one more thing before we go. So you have to change the text, Kevin, okay? That's correct, okay? So look at my page again, guys. Look at my page again. Here it says, in the text editor here on the left, after body, H1, Tech Club Live, I, I've then put, uh, in between the two P brackets, like Amelie said, you need to put a little introduction about yourself, okay? And that's the beginning of your website. If you want, you can delete the made with glitch but i would leave it there it's pretty cool yeah okay now i'm just going to check something for you. switch project now do, 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 do. where is it gone give me a second guys that's what coding's all about so css no it should be up here okay here we are so I'm gonna text. I'm gonna paste some code. Good, well done. You've deleted that. Good. So, guys, I'm gonna paste some code now into the box. If you look here, I want you to copy and copy. So, right click. You can right click on it, or you select it, or you can just literally look at it and type it into your code. Now, that bit of code comes underneath your body tag. So, if you look on my page here. Can you see where it says body? I want you to put that tag here. So open bracket, body, space, style, equals, open inverted commas, 66, background, dash, color, the American version, semicolon. You can write the color in there. You can choose green. You can choose powder blue. You can choose yellow. Then I want you to close that. With look, if I choose yellow, well, there you go, it's changed to yellow. Okay, now I want you to change that to any color you want. I like powder blue, I think it was quite nice. Choose powder blue for mine, and then I want you to close that with semicolon. I'm going to put the semicolons in there, close and then 99, and then close the brackets. Okay, now did you how did you do with that, guys? Let me know. We're still coding, are we? Big lesson today, I know. But we do need to start putting all the work that we're learning, learning in Tech Club Live. You guys, you have to understand that as you get older, you need to be able to record and demonstrate. Well done. Clifford's already added a list to his code. Amazing. Well done. Clifford, Um, yeah, give me a second, guys. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly show you how to publish your website, okay? So, yeah, I'm just going to quickly show you. So, in your preview window, there you go. Okay, can you see that? So, on the website on the right-hand side, yeah, in your website, it says change URL. There's a button that says change URL at the top there. You click on that button, okay? Oh, sorry, no, bear me a second. Sorry, no, that's not what you need to do. You need to change the name of your project first. So over here on the left-hand side where it says, whatever it says, click on that. Click at the top here, Titanium Bubble Polka, and type in uh, your name and then the website. So, for example, if it was Clifford, I would write Clifford website, okay? That's going to be your URL that when you click here on your URL, that means that Clifford's website's URL is https semicolon forward slash Clifford's website dot glitch dot me. Okay. And that's how you can go and see your website from any, any computer. Do you understand? So that is brilliant. Okay, guys. So you just need to change the file name. And then if you look at change URL, there's your website's name. And then you can access your website. I want you guys to try and put your URLs, the websites, in the chat 
so that we can have a look at your websites. What's the problem you're having, Simona? Please explain. Let me know, guys. It won't change the background color. So what? So just double check it. That it's the same here. So have you put it after the body tag? Straight after the body tag. Then type. Then it needs to be body style equals exclamation mark back. And make sure you've got exactly the same code which has been typed in there. Yeah. Double check it because we all we we will. There's we're only human. We make mistakes. Because there's a lot of mistakes always made on the coding. Coding is very dis interesting and difficult. Okay. Still nothing. Okay, try keep trying. But have you put the code up there? Have you made sure you can show it as well next to the code? If you click next to the code, can you see it on your website? Yeah. So I'm going to change mine, not from, <laughs> I'm going to change mine for Mr. Hines. Yeah, and and the shorter the URL, the better, guys, because people can see that quicker. So my website says here, today and over the next month, we are going to be creating and learning the constructs of web development using Glitch. Okay, how is everyone going, doing there? Let me know how everybody's doing. Okay, so now we're going to do, yeah, we'll do a hard one. This is a good one for you. Give it a moment, guys. Perfect, Clifford, exactly what you need to do, guys. Cover the pop. So then once you've created your website, you can then send that out to everybody and they can come and look at your page and say, oh, that's great. This is all the work that you can do. It's really good, especially when you're in secondary school, when you're going into college, et cetera, et cetera, because it can really help demonstrate, can help you get a job, guys. That's the main point. Okay. Nobody really uses so If you're for a job, your website and you say, go to my website, and that will tell you everything that I can do. Okay, does that make sense? I feel, I feel, like, I feel like everybody's really focused. Okay, so um, there we go. There's the Kahoot. Let's get over to the Kahoot. Well done, Ians works. Fantastic. Ians, put your URL, your website in the chat so we can all have a look at it. Okay. The same for you, Simona. Maybe I can have a look at it. Put your... Um, website in the chat your url yeah so remember i'll just quickly show you one last time guys to make your website live you need to go to the left hand side project options click on the name project change the name so i've changed mine to mr Hines over here you click off that and then you could go to change url in your website over here it says there's the button here click on that right click double click that and there you go my website is https uh co the colon slash forward slash forward slash mr hines dot glitch me and i just need to type that in and i can access that website at any time okay and then you've got your personal website guys we're going to start building as we go along throughout tech club putting all your information into your um website so now that you guys have done main most of you guys have done a year with me you understand uh, computational thinking, you understand the logical thinking behind websites, you understand the code, the CSS, how things are supposed to go. Now we're going to really put that work, that knowledge into practice. Okay. Yes, it does save by itself, Kyra. No problem. Simona, just, just get, get, I would save it and get on with it now. But, and then, uh, and uh, let's do the Kahoot real quick. Natalia T's in there, Pearl's in there, really good. It's uh, get on with the tech uh, with the Kahoot. See who's learned a lot today in HTML, and then we will see you tomorrow. Long lesson today, but guys, what you have to understand: this is different to the paid. Uh, sorry, to the free lessons. This is more comp comprehensive. So we're going to be teaching you a lot. This is what we're here to do, guys. That's why your parents pay, guys, so that we can teach you 
future skills that you can use in the future. Okay. And get one head, get ahead of the game in the future. Because when you become a teenager or 18 years old or something, and you'll look around, you'll be like, wow, I know coding. I can make a video. I can make my own music. I can do all of that. And I have all these skills. I can uh, apply myself. You'll be able to get yourself a very good job. Okay. I don't, not, that's not the, that's not the URL, I don't think, but let me just double check it, Ian. I can check your code, I think. So let's have a look at Ian's. Okay, so Ian's put his in there. Yeah, Ian, I can't see yours at the moment. Yeah, so you need to up. You should you should have uploaded the website. So Ian, I'm just gonna. Uh, yeah, let me quickly show you. So I've got Ian's project here. I'm just gonna quickly show you guys how to save yours again. No, 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 no. I'll just show you how to save your. That's it, Simona. Very good. Well done. Let's click on Simona's and see if it comes up. Yes, well done, Simona. Very good. Welcome. Hi there. I am Simona, 10 years old, and I go to Tech Club. It is a fascinating club that has taught me about photo, video editing, 3D modeling, and fixing bugs. Well done, Simona. That's a fantastic website. So that's the start. Okay. So what I'm just going to quickly show you is going to end that sharing, quickly show you one more time how to save your thing, your website. Brilliant website, Simona. Well done. We'll look at changing the color shortly, but uh, let's move on at the moment. But let's just have a quick look. Uh, yeah, so it's Ian, uh, I can't see your website, but I'm just going to show you what you need to do here. Remember, click on the left at the top. See where it says Crimson Brass Pyrite or whatever it says. Delete that. Ian website. Save that or just click off it. It will automatically save. Then go over to your website on the right hand side. Click change URL. And then that's your website there, https colon forward forward slash ianwebsite.glitch.me, okay? And then you paste that into the chat so we can see your website. Anyone else put their website in there? Okay, so we should have a fair few people who are now logged on to the um, Kahoot. Let's start the Kahoot. Okay, here we go. That's nine bays. I'm happy with that. Here we go. CSS and HTML layout. This should help. This should help us out. What is CSS used for? Somebody tell me, please. Is it? Nothing. It's useless in red. Creating links and website navigation, the basic structure of a website or the styling of a website with colors, fonts, and layouts. Do we understand that? What is CSS, guys? I'll put... Oh, no, I can't do that right now. Good. Four of you guys, we need to pay a little bit more attention, guys. So that's right. CSS is used for the styling, okay? Well done, Natalia T, right at the top. Anonymous, good. Pearl, cool, Stanhoper, and Kai Kai. Here we go. I know it was a long lesson. Identify the following layout section. <coughs> Guys, what's in the red? What's in the red? Is it the header? The aside? Is it the footer or the main section? This is the HTML skeleton of the website, remember? So what are we going to put here in this section? What have we got? Any answers? Well done. It is the footer. Oh, there's a bit of a change there. We've got Natalia T at the top. Pearl, who was Amelie. Cool Stanhope. I think maybe I am. Stanhope and Anonymous. Here we go. Next one. Identify the following layout section. Which section is this, guys? Is that a side, a header, a main section, or a footer? Yeah, a side, a header, a main section, or a footer? Well done. You guys have picked it up instantly now. Very good. We had to wake you up a little bit, but you're looking good. Simona's on the board. Stanhope, cool Stanhope, Pearl, and Natalia T. In the HTML box model, what goes outside of the border? What goes on the outside of the border? Is it padding? Is it content? Is it border? Or is it margin? I don't think I've taught you this yet, but you will get to that, and it's good if you learn now. Let's have a quick look at... Oh, Natalia, your website's amazing. Well done. So, Natalia, you were able to change your background into the into black, which was fantastic. Really good website, Natalia. Very good start. Very good. It is margin. Wow! You all got that right. It is margin. Well done. Emily, right at the top. Cool Stanhope and Natalia T. Simona and Stanhope. Here we go. CSS stands for... Ooh, who remembers this one? Cascading style sheet. Color styles and stuff. Coding 
style system code some style how are we doing <laughs> gloomy very gloomy it's nice though very good it's the beginning of your website natalia very good it is cascading style sheets but guys it's not coding style system cascading style sheets Pearl, Stanhope, Anonymous, Natalia T, and Cool Stanhope. Here we go. Identify the following layout section. What is the section? Is that a side, a header, main section, or a footer? If you look at your code in your websites, good. Wow. Impressive, guys. Who's at the top there? Oh, no change on the board. It's Amelie, Stanhope, Anonymous, Natalia T, and Cool Stanhope. Identify the following layout section for me, please. Is this a footer? Is this the header? Is this a side or the main section? What is it, guys? Please let me know. Please let me know. Ooh, guys. Some people have really picked up today. Very good. Which is the correct way to style a border using CSS? Is it ridge, dotted, double, or dashed? I didn't teach you any of these, but just take a guess. You will be learning all of that shortly. But great websites, guys. I'm very impressed. Have we done that one? Yep, they're all correct. You can use ridge, dotted, double, or dashed. You'll figure that out shortly. But you will use that shortly. It's good to know it now. Two more. What symbol contains all CCS declarations for an element? Is it these box brackets? Is it the curly brackets? Is it the alligator brackets or the normal brackets? Which ones are the CSS brackets? Which ones are the CSS brackets? Eight answers on the board. Ooh, not good. Guys, let me just educate you on that one because you, you should know that. I'm sure there's a mistake. Got a bit confused. The number two is the brackets that are used for CSS. Number seven, which, I mean, sorry, the yellow one, which everyone chose, which a lot of people chose, is for HTML. I'm sure you knew that. Good. Pearl, Emily at the top, Anonymous, Natalia T, Stanhope, and Cool Stanhope. Huh? Last question. What tag is used to create boxes in HTML? Is it the P tag, the body tag, the div tag, or H1 tag? Didn't teach you this. But it's very, very, very important in HTML. This is the one of the most important things in HTML. Most important things in HTML. You're going to learn this. You're going to utilize it, sorry. Okay. That's right. It's the div tool, okay? Div creates boxes in HTML. You'll learn about that in a bit. So let me just, take, just explain one more last thing to you guys. So someone answer me this question. Before we had the internet and web pages, how would people find out information? Or, or another way of question, how, give me, oh, close. Oh, that's the answer. Well done. Is that Amelie? Yes, Amelie is newspaper. Now, it's no problem, Kevin. So um, it is a newspaper. So what you have to understand, before we made websites, we used newspapers to find out information. Now, when we made a website, a web page, we used the same format, the same way a newspaper is made as to present information on a website. So a web page, the format of a web page is the same as a newspaper. If even if you look at the website right in front of you right now, guys, our website, it's got a box over here, a box there. It's all made up of boxes and rectangles. Can you see that? Can you see that everything's made up of a box or a rectangle or some form of box? That's because it's built off a newspaper format, okay? And the div, if the div, even on, on, on uh, Kahoot, box, 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 boxes made up of boxes, boxes within boxes. Can you see all the boxes and everything like that? That's what they, they're using the div tag to create all these boxes. OK, so you can see the, the red, the blue, the yellow and the green is a box type shape. They're using the div tag to create boxes. Just understand that, understand deeply that a news, 
web pages use the same format and newspaper uses okay so just if you understand that yeah exactly simona so many boxes everything's the whole web page if you look at it guys it's all little boxes boxes and boxes boxes and boxes and that is how you create that is the format to use a website so when you're making your website you have to keep that in mind okay right now who won the kahoot i hear simona scream at the top of her voice here we go in third place let's say a big congratulations to and let me know who this is oh natalia t well done natalia t fantastic very very good pearl in second which is amelie and in first place who was it who was it anonymous Who's anonymous? Natalia B, isn't it? Yes, Natalia B. <laughs> well done, Natalia B. Fantastic. Very good. Very good. Well done. Very good. So that's a St. Rafael's point as well today. Okay. So we currently have one to Spain. And there's that two to St. Rafael's and two times St. Rafael's, isn't it? That's right. Is that correct? Yeah, two, one to Spain and two to St. Rafael's. Very good. So two to St. Rafael's, one to Spain. Very good. Good game, guys. Very good. So we've learned a lot today. If you've got any more questions, let me know now. Any questions for, regarding the lesson, guys? Good. Natalia T. Good. <laughs> Natalia B., I like how you did that. I like how you did that. <laughs> That's very good. Okay, guys. Fantastic. Good. So what I would like you to do is try and make some edits on your website. Come back tomorrow put your website url your link in the chat and let's have a look at what websites we've learned tomorrow we will be going a little bit further into it as well okay any other questions if you don't have any questions we'll lovely and leave, love you and leave you to the